Here we go, they stand by and. Cue the tape, please, Ted. This is Behind the Scenes at the Muppet Show. My name is Jim Henson and I've been doing the Muppets for over 25 years. And actually I've been working Kermit the Frog for almost that long. Oh, well, well, did you know, Fozzie, that wherever the Muppet Show is screened outside of England and America, the bear speaks the language of that country? You mean I do? I, I speak the language of that country? Well, you don't. Uh, not exactly. Well, I, see, there's another, another, well, there's another bear that speaks for you. Another bear speaks for me? Well, so to speak, yes. Uh, he's not as funny as I am, huh? Well, sometimes he's funnier. He's funnier? The Muppet Show is now seen in over 100 countries, and I'm just delighted with the show's success. Because until this program came along, no one had ever done a show quite like this where the real stars are puppets. Hey, Kermit, me and the band gonna play at the wedding? <laughs> what wedding? Well, I just heard the news that you and Miss Fatback was going to tie the knot and raise chitlins. <laughs> Biggie, um, uh, come here, it's just a joke. A joke? Well, people want to think we're really engaged. <laughs> oh, oh, it's so sweet sounding when you say it. <laughs> well, the engagement is off. <laughs> come here, dear, dear sweetheart, it's not like that. It's like this. Well, Kermit's function on this show is very much like my own, in that uh, he's trying to hold together this group of crazies. And that's not unlike what I do. We are trying to put on a classy show here. You can't treat me like that. I'll stick my pet barracuda on you. Get her, Kevin. I am so out of show. Okay, vet's hospital on stage in one minute. The red suit snout. Come is it always like this on the show? Oh, how do you mean? Well, all this craziness. Oh, well, this is actually a rather quiet show for us. No unforeseen disasters so far. Hurry up, guys! Okay. All right, all right, all right. Switch out! Unforeseen disasters? Uh, uh, well, that's a disaster we knew about all along. <laughs> Frank Oz joined me about 18 years ago, so I think I've often credited him with being one of the real reasons that The Muppet Show is funny. And of course, most people know him on the show as the man behind Miss Piggy. Is the pig ready? The pig takes twice as long as the guest stars. <laughs> okay, let's put the... the sofa goes across. All right? Yeah. Bye, Frank. The necessity of uh, doing a shot like this you have to, uh, you have to, uh, in order to make it look good up there, it has to be uncomfortable down here. Oh, come sit right here. Roger, I'm so glad you asked me up here. Well, actually, I didn't ask you. Oh, well, Roger, mon amour, you know we are meant to be, vous et moi? Vous et moi, nous. Who? Huh? Oh, Roger. Oh. Out on the briny, a 
Roger, with the moon, big and shiny. But I'm not green. I don't have flippers. <laughs> Melting your heart of stone. Here we go. Well, when you consider you do a whole bunch of characters and uh, you can walk down the street and nobody will know you're those characters, it's a very good thing because you can go in and buy a can of beans at the supermarket and no one's going to bother you. On the other hand, when you want someone to bother you while you're buying a can of beans, <laughs> it gets very depressing. So you, ha you have to, it depends how you feel, how you wake up in the morning. You know, she gets quite embarrassed about this. Oh, well, lady. Piggy's become a phenomenon in the last few years, and I think when we introduced her, we had no idea she would take off like she has. The media has taken her and made a big thing of her. It's a personality that Frank Oz has created, that people somehow, uh, everybody identifies with and either loves or hates. Andrew, come you and I, we are engaged. No! That's wonderful. Yes, it, it, it just happened. Can I make the announcement? No. No. Um, only you and I know. And Kermit. Who? Oh, yes, yes, uh, Kermit, yes, yes. The frog and the pig getting uh, married. Yes. Soon there will be the patter of tiny figs. <laughs> when you finish breaking yourself up, you will sing, won't you? <laughs> but uh, we had total freedom to do it. There's, yeah. an, there's an incredible amount of freedom in writing a show like this, be just from from that point of view and from an artistic point of view as well. You know, because you, you can sit down and, and and type almost any insane fantasy you can think of on paper, and uh, there are people standing by to do it. It's the Each show is written a couple of months before it's actually recorded, and we have a great team of writers. Jerry Jewell, our head writer, has been with the show since the beginning. Don Hinckley is a very experienced television writer who's written all kinds of variety television over the years. David O'Dell first worked with us on the Muppet movie, and he's been with us for a season and a half now. And Chris Langham is the only English writer, and he has a very off-the-wall sense of humor. Frank and I usually sit in on these meetings a couple of times a week. No, I think it's a good opening number. It's, it's, it's too expensive. expensive. Mm -hmm. it's expensive. It's expensive. Well, that's why it's not going to I mean, I can't it? believe that there's no way to do it. You, you had reservations about the number, 
It seems like a scenery joke. Actors that are... What's wrong with scenery jokes? Yeah. yeah. If you intercut the bow back there, pulling yeah. cur pulling mm -hmm. uh, ropes like crazy, trying to get the right one. I think then you can also intercut to Kermit back there saying, Bo, for crying out loud, why aren't you doing this one? And mm -hmm. Bo says, I don't know which one. And so we can have that going on backstage while these guys are trying to do a musical number. And if necessary, we could put a set piece in there maybe instead of a curtain. But I just think the whole idea of it is very nice that they start a, a musical number and everything kind of goes wrong. <laughs> You rehearse and rehearse. Three weeks and it couldn't be worse. Two weeks, will it ever be worse? Right? And another half of that the first night. The overture is about to start. You cross your fingers and hold your heart. It's curtain time and the way we go. Another opening of another. No, nope. I checked all the doors. They got us locked in. <laughs> Let us flip and go for together to see which one is smarter. Some say men, but I say no, cause Gopher beats the men when place and show. I ain't me. <laughs> it's the people that say man's the one that we gotta obey but i say it's the gophers today smarter than a man in every way that's right the gophers are smarter that's right the gophers are smarter that's right the gophers are smarter smarter than a man Our group of performers has been together for many years and we know each other so well that we can kind of bounce off each other when we're working together and it's this working relationship it has a kind of marvelous chemistry to it and i think it's terribly important that uh, when we're working in the studio we work with this kind of affection and and high spirits frank oz is involved in all aspects of the show and his contribution to the development, uh, to the humor of everything, is just enormous. Of course, his major contribution is still being a brilliant performer. That's okay, I can cope with this. After all, I am an important bear. Uh, I, I am capable, I am poised. Hiya, Fozzie. I, I, uh, I am Mahamahoba, hiya, ha, ha. I've been wanting to meet you. <sighs> oh, me? Excuse me, oh. I my head drops. See what happens when you walk in the... Jerry Nelson has been with the Muppets for about a dozen years or so. And he does Lou Zealand, he does Robin, Kermit's little nephew, and Floyd Pepper, who's a member of the Dr. Teeth Band. And Jerry has a wonderful singing voice and a great range of other voices, too. Uh, listen, Kermit, you're a nice little dude in your own amphibian way, but I just can't take it anymore. But what's the matter? It's the theme song. The theme? Kermit, you are talking to Floyd Pepper, the hippest of the hip. I mean, I have a room for life at the home for the chronically groovy. <laughs> and every week I have to come in here and play dun 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 Nice. Richard Hunt came to us right out of high school, I think, and started working in small ways and slowly built up to where he's doing major characters. When I came into the thing, I was 18, and I was really energetic, and, uh, you know, I'd say, yeah, sure, everything you want to do, boss, no problem. I talked a lot like him, because he's my voice when I was younger, like this. Hi, are you Kermit the Frog? Uh, yeah. Well, uh, I'm Scooter. Cute. Cute name. I'm your new gopher. Gopher? Uh, no, no, we have frogs and pigs and chickens around here, but we've never had a gopher. Matter of fact, you don't even look like a gopher. <laughs> yeah, well, you don't understand. You see, I'm a new gopher. Yeah, I'll go for coffee, I'll go for sandwiches, I'll go for anything you need. I see. Yeah, well, I work real cheap, and I got plenty of ideas for your theater, and I'll mm. start tonight, okay? 
Uh, listen, listen, kid, I'm sorry, but uh, you're too young, you don't have any experience, and I don't have any money for it in the budget. Yeah, well, my uncle owns this theater. Uh, you start today, give me a cup of coffee, your salary is 20 a week. David Coles was an industrial designer before he joined the Muppets, and he was designing computer consoles, and somehow he became attracted to our work, and so he joined our shop as a puppet builder and started performing and gradually worked long until now he's one of our star puppeteers. Say, howdy. What do you say? Say, what's happening? Hi. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This evening, I will perform a feat of lunatic daring. Before your very eyes, I will ride this motorcycle up this ramp and jump directly into that box, landing safely between those two elderly gentlemen. What? Oh, I can assure you, you'll be in no danger. You're right. We'll be in Chicago. <laughs> For their own safety, uh, while they were dozing, I took the precaution of chaining them to their chairs. What? <laughs> <laughs> On my mark. Get set. Go. <laughs> Steve Whitmire had his own television show in Atlanta as a young puppeteer, and my wife was down there and saw that and invited him to come up to talk to us about joining our group. Kathy Mullen joined us just before uh, we did the Muppet movie, and she worked on that and then came over here. She has a background in children's theater. Louise Gold is our English performer, and she does a character known as Annie Sue Pig, who's been Miss Piggy's rival in a few of the shows. Louise is a great singer and does a lot of our best musical numbers. If I saw a tub, I don't think I'd disturb it. I wouldn't want to try for weather try. They're such nice people. You know, this is a, a nice group of people, and we have a lot of fun. I don't think a gargle would be a fish, but... Yeah, it's going to be a sharp sound. Oh! 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 I can go behind everybody and just sort of... No, that's okay. No, because we're still important. I'll just, uh, I'll be here in case the, the sound isn't good enough. Well, we hear it again, Blue. Just... Let's yeah, have a chance. Do it water above the waist. Okay. Uh, it's coming. <laughs> and make it more, more ear urgent, right? Yes. 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 Ow. More Very of an ow than ah. Uh. Okay. Ow. <laughs> ow. Just don't swallow your lips. Everybody ready. Okay. Cue tape. <laughs> She's drowning. She's drowning. Yeah, artificial perspiration. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here I am, New Zealand, and my fabulous singing fish. <laughs> David Laser is our executive producer, and one of the things he does is guide the guest stars through their week in our rather unconventional world here. He also supervises the whole business area. The guest stars are a vital part of our show. They add a new texture each week, a new motivation for us, for the writers, for the performers, and a lot of fun to work with. A lot of fun. Look at this. We have five years here. Working with 120 guest stars has been a fantastic experience for all of us. We've worked with the greats of showbiz. We've worked with all our heroes. It's fun, and that sense of fun, I think, permeates the show. If you want to be the top banana, you got to start from the bottom of the bunch. 
you gotta know the joke about the farmer's daughter. Then take it in the kisser with the solo water. <laughs> I believe this program is trivial and, and not fit for family viewing. You're a comic genius. Aw, oh, thank you, Gonzo. I love doing this show. Yeah, if your nose weren't so small, you'd probably be a big star like me. <laughs> now, the next thing I must do, Link, is to test out the elasticity of the tendons in the leg areas. Oh, mm, good. Mm. <laughs> That's a very unusual feeling. Now, Link, I'm going to try both of the legs at the same time. Oh, it's dead. Oh, you can feel that? Oh, yeah. It's doing you good, Link? Oh, I love it. <laughs> Relax. What? Relax now. Control yourself. The white eternal light is penetrating your temple, going down through your body and coming out your toes. You relaxed? Does he love me? I want to know. So is like a So is like a So is like I light up when you call my name Cause you know I'm gonna treat you right You give me fever <laughs> When you kiss me <laughs> Our workshop is the place where the puppets are created, uh, where they're costumed, where we build a lot of the props. Very often we'll throw something at these builders just at the last minute and they've got to come up with some sort of solution. <coughs> My early thought was that they would be all cute and cuddly and have evil eyes. But as I look at those guys, I think that maybe it makes them too evil, and it might be more fun to have them like the pink rabbit there, because that looks great fun, and knowing mm -hmm. that that's a spy. You know? It makes them more real when they seem to really be looking out. Yeah. I made a, a fake so that, hand like okay, this yeah. that you could reach up so with and go up. like that, and I hopefully if your hand's in there, you can keep that's it from funny. jerking. <laughs> Animals. Trade a thought or two in language that I think they'll comprehend. And to the music of Scalati, some judo and karate are proof I'm strong enough to make them dead. Communication is what we need. Then they'll understand things can always end up peacefully. And I've explained to the animals, brained all the animals, thought and talk and brained all the animals. We have a group of puppets called Whatnots. They're basically featureless characters with just blank heads in several different shapes and, and sizes. And then we have a whole bunch of features that we can attach with tape or pins. We have a whole lot of eyes and ears, noses, uh, different wigs, and that sort of thing. And we can put them on and change their personality completely. We can make almost any kind of character you can think of. I feel charming, oh so charming. It's alarming how charming I feel. And so pretty that I hardly can believe I'm real. See the pretty girl in that mirror there? What mirror where? Who can that attractive girl be? Which 
one welcome. Such a pretty face, such a pretty touch, such a pretty smile, such a pretty me. One thing about being a puppeteer is it really takes a long time to learn how to do it. And people who join us, you usually have to work for about a year before the puppetry gets sort of good enough to be able to handle major parts. There's a whole lot of mechanics to it all. You know, just the idea of you have to learn how to put all of your performance into this hand. And, and just the mechanics of doing the lip sync, you know, is uh, it takes a long time before that's totally automatic, and it has to be totally automatic before you can relax and do a performance. I got the horse right here. His name is Paul Revere, and here's a guy who says if the weather's clear, can do, can do. This guy says the horse can do. I it got a horse right here. Horse belongs to Guinevere, and I say this horse can do, can do. Can do anything you can do, I can do better. I can do anything better than you. No, you can't. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. A boy like that would kill your brother. Forget that boy and find another. One of your own kind, sent through your own kind. The characters usually don't exist below the waist. This guy happens to have legs, you know, but most of the characters don't even have legs. And so here we're taking all these characters that only exist from the from the waist up, and we're trying to make we're trying to fool the audience into thinking that they're they're living in a whole world and that there's a whole reality to the world. And uh, so it's kind of a game. Skywalker and C-3PO, and R2-D2 from Star Wars. Excuse me, Master Luke, but what is this strange world we've come to? Beats me, 3PO. Seems we've landed on some sort of comedy variety show planet. <laughs> My ancestor, the Viking, was terrible at plundering and pillaging. He was? Yes, he plundered his plundering and he, he blundered. <laughs> <laughs> he was stupid in his pillaging. How stupid was he? <laughs> <laughs> Two, three, four. They call him the pillage idiot. Oh. He was stupid with his pillaging. We'll get that. We do a show a week. Every number we do has to go through the same stages. The first day is the script read-through and music rehearsals for vocals. And then the next day we record the band, and then the vocals are laid down. Then we're in the studio rehearsing and videotaping the action. Each show presents different problems. We used a Viking village background for In the Navy. It's another one of our epics. We want you, we want you, we want you as a new recruit. We want you, we want you, we want you as a new recruit. Okay, now stop here for a second. Now, now it's the peasants and the sheep and so forth just, responding, just, and they're saying, come on, protect our motherland. Uh, just we get at this alteration yes. here. Okay, add, a, add an extra In the oh, Navy. After Can't You See We Need a Hand. Much more quasi horns. Bar five. Brassy. Brassy. The Vikings coming in. We want you. We want you. 
We want you as the new recruit. We want you. We want you. We want you as the new recruit. Where can you find pleasure? Search the world for treasure. Learn science, technology. Where? Where can you begin to make your dreams all come true? On the land or on the sea? Where? Where can you learn to fly, play, in sports or skin dive, study oceanography? Where? Sign up for the big band or sit in the grandstand when your team and others meet. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five. No tape, please, Ted. Village, <laughs> get us on. Wonderful, Roger. Round two next. And on the boat. We want you, we want you, we want you as a new recruit. We want you, we want you, we want you as a new recruit. Where can you find pleasure? Search the world for treasure. Learn science, technology. Where? Where can you begin to make your dreams all come true? On the land or on the sea? Where? Where can you learn to fly, play, in sports or skin, dive, study, ocean, Am I sound? Where? Yeah, never Sign up for the big band or sit in the grandstand when like your team and others meet. In the Navy, yes, you can sail the seven seas. In the Navy, yes, you can put your mind at ease. In the Navy, now people make a stand. In the Navy, yes, Howdy. Really, it's hard doing this with one hand, closing on the beat, and opening with the beat on this hand. So you're doing. <laughs> we want you. We want you. I can't do it. You have to do it. No, I can't. Nobody can. Don't worry. Richard Holloway is our floor manager, and he's an absolutely indispensable person. He's our link between all of us in front of the camera and the director up in the control booth. We have two television directors for the show, Philip Casson and Peter Harris, and they alternate one doing one week and one doing the next. And they control what is actually being videotaped and transmitted. They get to see the whole shape of the show, and they do all the things that most television directors do, plus dealing with the unique problems that we have in creating our own illusions. In the Navy, in the Navy, cut. Right, okay. I, mean, I would like to now see you all starting to march back towards the boat. Yes, fine. So it's a shot over boat. Go! When we're working, our entire reality is on the screen. You are performing, and at the same time, you're seeing your performance exactly like the audience does. Until we had television puppetry, it wasn't possible. You'll notice when we're working out on the floor, we have monitors all around the place. Because everybody has to see a monitor. Stop, Stop please. What? I'm what? sorry, what? Stevie went too high. So, under, so underneath everything, hands the lot. The whole problem relates to the fact that the puppet is only from the waist up and that there's a large puppeteer, you know, right below. So what we've got to shoot with, we can only shoot from the top of our heads up to the hand. I mean, this, this is a span of about 18 inches. We want you. We want you as new recruit. We want you. We want you. Play that back, please, John. The show used to be a bit simpler. Uh, we're getting more elaborate these days, and, which is more fun. And uh, some of the production numbers that we're doing now take a long time. We spent all day on the Viking number. And uh, we really don't have time to spend all day on the Viking number. It's a good number, and it'll be a lot of fun. But when you're spending about three days to do a show, you really don't have one day to spend on just a two and a half minute piece. We got you, we got you as a new recruit. Wait, we got you, we wait, got you, we got you. Push it, go, Stan. We got you, we got you, we got you as a new recruit. We got you, we got you, we got you as a new recruit. We got you, we got you, we got you as a new recruit. We got you, we got you, we got you as a new recruit. Ooh, terrible, bad, not bad. Good.
pretty good. Okay. Decent. Fair. Great. I loved it. Go on, go on. know how she gets me into these things are you ready kermit yeah just don't push me hard what push me hard okay yeah i think so i'm just a little oh. woozy that's all oh, kermit. close the curtains yes wow what a terrific act do you want a partner guns will get him backstage Ah, don't worry, it's all part of the act. These idiots are rushing on from backstage to onstage. And they do this every week. They don't give up. <laughs> they have no idea that it's really, um, really old hat burlesque stuff. They love it. And, and that's part of it, too. I think they love doing the show. The Fasubes. Kermit! Uh, what is it, Gonzo? Kermit, I've got this great new act for you. Uh, not now, Gonzo. You see, right now I'm in the middle of auditions. Okay, we'll audition. I, I've seen your acts, Gonzo, you see. I don't want to see any more of them. Thank you, okay? I'll, I'll talk to you later, all right? All right, all right. Scooter, who's next, Scooter? Well, look, at least let me tell you about the act. No. Scooter! I'm going to tell you anyway. I won't listen. Dancing cheese. Dancing cheese? You were listening. <laughs> Will somebody find Scooter? It's this theater you come to every single week, and every week... Fozzie Bear is dying to try out this new joke, and after he comes off, he is indeed dying. <laughs> okay, Chucky, listen, uh, why does the chicken cross the road? <laughs> why does the chicken cross the road, Chucky? Say something, anything? Uh, uh, Fozzie, Fozzie. He won't talk to me. Yeah, well, listen, there's something about ventriloquism that I think you should know. What? Well, you see, Fozzie, listen, Fozzie, mm -hmm. it's the ventriloquism. Does it? Yes. Really? Mm -hmm. No moving lips? No. Nope. Okay, okay, I got it now. Uh, 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 listen, um, uh, Chucky, uh, who was that lady I saw you with last night? I'm only just black and blue and green. <laughs> uh, and call off this dog of yours, would you? Oh, Fufu loved that dog. The characters, they're a very warm, affectionate family. They have all the qualities that we do. You have pet peeves, you have people you like, you don't like. Piggy thinks Gonzo is a creep. Uh, Gonzo loves the, the chickens. Uh, Kermit uh, uh, wants to get the show moving. Piggy wants Kermit. Floyd can't stand the pig. Uh, Janice and Floyd are very tight together but they hate the, pig, the pig's dog, uh, Fufu, and uh, Fufu gets mad at Fozzie, and Fozzie uh, scared to go on, and the uh, Stratley Waldorf hate Fozzie, not hate Fozzie, but, you know, heckle Fozzie. There's all that intermingling, all there, and just pushing and pulling. Like, it's, it's like a funny Eugene O'Neill story, right? I mean, everybody's at each other, but in a very funny way, and an affectionate way. <laughs> Don't need help. Your steers. Humiliating. Uh, what, just what's the help me. What is it? Uh, look, pull. Help me pull it. Pull the lever. What? Where? What? This lever. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what happened? Those two stole my act. <laughs> hey, you want to stop by the punch bowl? Why do they call it a punch bowl? <laughs> That's why. I'm very much against violence on television, but I think what we do doesn't really drop into that category. There's been puppet violence for hundreds of years, and I think there's a big difference between someone being stabbed with a knife and an obvious toy figure being thrown around. Basically because you know nobody's being hurt, and at the same time, it, you know, there's, there's a lot of fun to it, and it does feel like a, sort of a healthy outlet. I really love what you can do with television techniques in combination with puppetry. All 
all the little birds on Jaybird Street love to hear the robin go. Tway, tway, tway. Drifting along with a tumbling tumbling. Just where the trail will wind. Drifting along with a tumbling tumbling. Better do something. I can't go through life this tall. Don't worry, my dear. You should start becoming smaller any minute. Oh, yes, you're right. Oh, thank goodness. You're welcome. In no time at all, you'll be your normal size again. Yes. Yes, I am my normal size. Oh, good. That is, I was my normal size. Uh, uh, Bunsen, you got to do something. I will. What? I'll tie up the cat. <laughs> Beside the technology of television, we still rely on the old standbys like uh, breakaway props, sight gags, pies in the face, and explosions. <laughs> Well, all right. Let's set up for one more. And now a Muppet news flash. This is an update on the Henderson burglary. Police have recovered all the stolen property except the silverware. It has disappeared into thin air, says Chief of Keep a moving, Dan, don't you listen to him, Dan. He's a devil, not a man, and he spreads the burning sand with water. Water. Dan, can't you see that big green tree where the water's water. running free? And it's waiting water. there for me and you. We generally start working on the sets about five or six weeks before we need them. Initially, I'll meet with one of our designers, like Lee Malone, and we'll go through the script talking about what we need. Besides Lee, our set designers are Brian Holgate and our key designer is David Chandler, and they create the visual look of each of our production numbers with an incredible amount of detail. Yeah, I think it should definitely be night. Yeah, it's moonlight, fireflies. Hey, Ray, do you have a copy of uh, Blue Bayou? Yes, uh, I would do. Would you like to put it on? Of course. Because it would just help render on But I would I see her, so uh, bad, I got a you know, light color dress. And she's, you know, but on the next, you know, next to the swamp. And we had lily pads, and we got cypress and moonlight. Mm -hmm. That sort of thing. And cameras traveling around through the stuff. Yeah. I'm going back someday. Come what may to blue by Where the fox are.
done a lot of dance numbers on the show, working with choreographers Jillian Lynn and Norman Maine. Right. The choreographer has to work out a dance routine tailor-made for each guest's particular talents, take, like the great cavewoman routine steady, that Norman five, worked six, out for Raquel. One, two, three, four, five. Turn back on yourself. Five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four. Look. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. Five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five. Are they going for a take on this straight away? We've done a lot of work with Graham Fletcher, who's a soloist with the Royal Ballet. And he's not only a brilliant and versatile dancer, but he's also very good natured about getting into our more outlandish costumes. One, two, two. <laughs> Theater? <laughs> <laughs> okay, here he is now, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. John Cleese. All right, I'm leaving. Oh, wait, John, hold. Oh. Hold, oh, what's the matter? Kermit, I am not going to do some glossy-eared Mexican maracas solo. It doesn't have to be a solo, guys. <laughs> that does not help. Oh, no, well, how about this? All right, everybody, go no, down. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Kermit, there is no a way I'll do a song. There is no way he'll do a song. We'll stop this at once. We will stop this at once. This is not funny. Oh, we hope this is funny. Right. I'm leaving. She's leaving. He came into our life, but now he's leaving. You were supposed to be my host! How can you do this to me? Kermit, I am your guest! This is your guest <laughs> To follow the star No matter how hopeless No matter how far Our initial contact with the guest star is a phone call, and that could be from me or Jim or Jerry Jewell. And we, we chat with them a little bit, and we find out if they have a favorite character or if there's something they would like to do that they can't do in their normal career. And we, if I speak with a dancer, I, maybe they want to sing, or, or maybe vice versa, or maybe an actor wants to do a comedy thing. And we're famous for that. We, we'll take them, and if they want to get outrageous, we'll go right along with it. know how to tap dance, would you? Well, as a matter of fact, I do know how to tap dance. No, 
know in show business why things are phenomena like this. You, you have no idea why, truly, or else everybody would be doing it. If you talk to you to uh, housewives in the Midwest, Excellent. they see one thing in the show, True. and if you see if you talk to jazz yes. musicians exactly. in New York, they see another thing in the show. Yep. They're seeing the, they're all watching the same program, and they're coming away f with with different things. Yep. And that's something that I I certainly would think has happened unconsciously on our part. You know, again, we just do a show that seems to entertain ourselves. For whatever reason the show works, it's done by a group of people who genuinely like each other and enjoy what they do, and what we've done for the last five years is a show that's seen and enjoyed by people all over the world. Listen, Fozzie, don't be discouraged. Even if you don't make a lot of money, you're doing what you love to do. Just look around you. The costumes, the scenery, the makeup, the props. We have a, we have a fighting There's no people like show people they smile and they are low yesterday they told you you would not go far that night you open and there you are next day on your dressing room they've hung a star let's go on with our show. There's no business like show business, like no business I know. Everything about it is appealing. Everything the traffic will allow. No get that happy feeling when you are stealing that extra bow there's no people like no people they smile when they are low even with a turkey that you know will fold you may be stranded out in the cold but still you wouldn't change it for a sack of gold let's go on 